Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, with a video on some Dungeon Draft quick tips to help you with making your maps. Some of these we've gone over in other videos, but I wanted to create a dedicated reference for you. So with that, let's get right into it. For our first tip, we're going to connect curved and straight walls together. The example here is a round room connected to a squared off hallway. You can see that this joint is really nice and that we have the full circle. And we'll see that there are two joints where the circle meets the hallway and in the middle of the circle. This is a great way to get a nice clean result. Let's take a look at some typical approaches we might try. So if we place our circular walls on the round room first and don't leave any gaps, we're not actually able to edit the points of the wall to expand out the room or create an opening. So it's hard to make a doorway. Another approach might be to just draw the walls starting from the straight hallway. But we'll notice that if we start this curve here where the straight hallway kind of gets to a snap point, it's not going to line up exactly with the curvature of the room. And when we fill this out, depending upon the scale and what we're working with, this might be okay. But as we'll see when we finish the walls, that again, this curve is really going to stick out initially, and if you take off grid and you take a look at the completed walls, you can tell that there is a slight uh, shift to the aspect ratio of the room. So if you want to be really precise with it, this isn't the best method. There's a couple different options we have here. The one I demonstrated in the initial scene is the one I'm going to go over here. Here I'm going to make the walls for the round room in two parts. So I'm doing the top half of the circle first, and then the bottom half as a completely separate wall. Next, with my wall set to under, I will do the walls leading in from the hallway. Then I'm going to use my edit points and delete some of these center points just to make sure I can grab the correct ones. Then I still have my snap to grid on, and I am going to position the tailing points of the round walls and then line it up on the same axis of the squared off walls for the hallway. Now, fortunately, the endpoints in my circle were already on the correct axis, so I didn't need to use any extra fidgeting, but if I did, I could take snap off and position those final points to get a nice beveled corner there. And we can see that this circle is perfectly aligned with the pattern shape, and if we zoom out, and this will be similar for when you export it, those joints aren't even visible between the round wall and the hallway walls. Another way to do this is you can create the whole circle wall in one piece. We'll notice that if we place all of our splines, there gets this kind of cyan color highlighting to the walls we've already placed. And if we left click our final point, it will close the circle. Now, if we repeat this though, and rather than left clicking when we place the final spline, we right click. It will finish the wall, but it will leave a gap. So this is not a completely closed circle, and we can then edit the points. And we can use the same technique here, where we are putting the end points of the curved walls along the same axis that our flat walls are. We could then either draw them underneath or extend them out like I'm doing here. So those are two options to add in nice transitions between curved and straight walls, and these don't have to be regular curves either. For our next tip, we're going to go over a technique we've used in a few videos on copying and pasting with patterns. So here I just have a wooden platform with a grate. Say this is on the deck of a ship, and I want a shadow of this grate to be cast down either on a lower level or be visible underneath it. I can copy and paste that pattern shape, and then I can go over to my color, and I can set the color to black. And then we have this nice black shape that still has the exact same texture to it. And I can adjust my opacity to whatever I want to either line up with other shadows I have in the scene, or here I'm just going to make it right in the middle at 127. And then I can send it to the back and I can place it underneath this. And when I turn off my snap to grid, I can offset it nicely. And we'll see when we zoom in 
that this creates this really nice effect of being able to see the shadows cast from the grate down below. So I can use this whether it's on this level or if I was making a separate level to indicate this, I could then put it on the deck. So for example, here we can use this same technique to show the great shadow casting down. On the subject of pattern shapes, let's take a look at rotating pattern shapes, specifically inside of prefabs. So I have this prefab here. If you have looked at the modular Gothic castle, you'll recognize it as the sun mosaic. If I select a prefab, all of its constituent parts get highlighted. And if I use my mouse wheel to rotate like a wooden object, we'll see that the paths and the shadow objects at the points rotate, but not the pattern shapes themselves, which might lead you to believe that you can't actually rotate the pattern shapes within a prefab. You'll notice though that when we select this, the cursor turns into a hand icon just outside of this blue bounding box for my selection. And I can use that to drag and rotate by holding down left click. And then I can line up this rotation and the whole prefab is going to rotate with it. It's not perfect because we don't have snap angles, but you can use some different cues. For example here, I know that if I can get the top and bottom points of this white triangle on my selection to line up on this axis, I will have rotated the entire prefab exactly 45 degrees or close enough that there's no way I'm going to be able to tell the difference with my eye. And here we can see that it looks like it's been rotated perfectly. Where this can also really come in handy is you can see these tower stairs I brought in that are only a quarter of a large circle. And if I want to either have a flight only on one side of it in a different quadrant, or I wanted to make a full circle out of it by dropping in multiple pieces, I can use the same technique. And here we can see that the blue line, the bounding box of the selection, is pretty straight, but then has like a couple of spots where it shifts up by a pixel. And you can use that as a way of gauging whether you are exactly on a 90 or not and get a really good rotation. Our final tip is for creating references for repeating splines. I've been making a lot of ships, and here I have a layout level for a sloop I've been making. This is the quarter deck, and you'll notice all of these barrels. I'm using the stock dungeon draft assets because I know I won't confuse them for assets I'm actually using in a map. And I have these points all over the place for this interesting layout. If I go to a new layer and I compare levels to my layout side, we can see all of these points and the pattern shapes from that. And this makes it really easy for me to replicate the exact lines that I got when I was doing my layout. So if I use the custom shape, I can start with one point. Each of these barrels indicates a place where I'm going to click. So I click my start and end points, and then I have the midpoint or the arc point for my spline already figured out. And I can just repeat that process going through. And where this is really valuable is exactly in this kind of use case with a ship, where I want to be able to replicate this exact footprint on multiple levels to make sure that things line up and look good. And if we increase the opacity for the layout, we can see that my wood texture lines up perfectly with this purple pattern shape that I created, and that's what we're matching these spline points for. I also have the points dedicated for the lighter blue colors if I want to add those. So this is really useful if you're trying to repeat these patterns on multiple layers. You can use this for paths, pattern shapes, anything you want. And you can also color code the objects if you use colorizable assets. That way you can distinguish between splines. That's my final tip for today. I hope that these have been useful to you and added some new techniques for your arsenal when you are making your maps. If you've got other tips and tricks that you think people should know about, please tell us in the comments down below and maybe we can make a video on it. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Zephyr. Happy map making and have a good one.